Hello, everybody. My name is Ron, and this is Just a Little Guy, a podcast where I ask content creators to concoct creepy critters, malodorous monsters, baneful beasts, and whatever disturbing design comes to mind. That uh, intro is sent in uh, thanks to Jay Solari, who you may remember from episode uh, five, I want to say, four or five. I should probably know my own episodes. Anyway. Before we get started today, I just wanted to take a second to express my gratitude to all of our patrons whose continued support makes this show possible, especially those who contribute at the incomprehensible cosmic abomination level. Special thanks go out to Taru Tikanin, D. Solari, Lunchbox, and Jared S. Thank you all for the support, and if you'd like to help fund the collective creativity, feel free to mosey on down to patreon.com slash guy. The link is in the description, and I'm sure you'll hear it quite a few times throughout this episode, if I'm being honest. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who came through and donated to the emergency fund that we had last month. Uh, my fiance needed to have emergency dental surgery done, and you guys came in and helped to cover the cost um, quite a bit. I think we ended up, the last time I checked, about over 60% of our goal. Um, so we're still working to pay off that that debt. Um, if you'd like to help contribute to the remainder of the fund, um, it's co-fi.com. Uh, slash rswarthout. I will post the link in there as well. Uh, if you just want to do a one-time donation, I mean, that's great. It would really be helpful for us um, as we continue to try to pay down this debt. Um, thank you again to everybody who has donated so far. And if you missed it, there was a live stream that I did at the end of last month that, uh, you know, I kind of did as a way to say thanks uh, for everybody who, who came through. Um, I'm probably going to continue to try to find a way to, you know, really express my gratitude um, in other ways, but it, in the meantime, um, I hope you'll just accept that uh, my, my, my thanks in words, um, it truly was, um, moving and heartening in a way that I really can't describe. Like I didn't anticipate the amount of support, um, that we got from folks who were not like people who are familiar with us through what's left of us and through the podcast and stuff like that. But also folks who did not know me at all just came through and like really, really helped us out of a bind in this situation. Um, so sincerely and from the bottom of my heart, I mean every single syllable of um, the thank you that I send um, to each and every one of you out there. So once again, not going to try to belabor the point. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. A million times. Thank you uh, for all of the assistance there. Today, I'm being joined by a first time caller, long time listener and friend of the show. Uh, this is Hollow Static Observer. How's it going, uh, Hollow Static Observer? Um, it's good. Uh, you can call me Gel for short, if that's easier. Gel. Um, All right. Uh, Gel sounds good. Yeah. S J is pronounced like Jacques, like the the J in Jacques. Uh, in ah, fair enough. Um, that's fair. That's fair. So tell me a little bit about uh, yourself. Uh, you're uh, an aspiring content creator. Uh, what kind of what kind of projects you got in the works? What should we be looking forward to from you? So I have been writing for a long time. I am actually finally working on a book, um, kind of a fantasy, little bit of like science fiction, like old style, old timey style fi science fiction worked in. Um, I don't know how long that's going to take, but for right now, I am working on a D&D &D campaign that I do plan on recording and hopefully publishing if I can figuring out, figure out how editing and such works. <laughs> um, yeah. I am working on a Minecraft mod pack that... Mod packed? mod pack yeah a pact with a you know patron <laughs> yes, you know yes, as I'm in patreon.com slash just a little guy hey <laughs> the plug amazing yeah you knew you had to drop no, it early yeah, no, so. it has to happen. <laughs> um i do not have 
Actually, I think I technically do, but I'm not going to plug a Patreon because I don't have anything out there yet. Um, I'm working on that mod pack so I can start hopefully a Let's Play that I, I might stream on occasion, but it's probably going to be mostly VOD style. And yeah. my, my goal is just play the game as far as I can with like create mod and everything until I have drills and stuff without mining a single resource. Oh wow. Yeah. That's going to be that's going to be tough. <laughs> I'm going to probably be first thing I'm probably going to end up doing is setting up an iron farm in a village. So that's going to be a pain without tools. Oh yeah. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> um and yeah, I got I have set up some things. I've set up my YouTube, I've set up my Twitch and my Blue Sky, uh, which I presume links will be in the de uh, description. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely gonna put all of your stuff down in the description. So if y'all want to follow Hollow Static Observer uh, at Jello said Gel, right? Yeah, at Jello Jello Cat. Cat. Um Screen name Hollow Static Observer tag is at jello cat and yeah. it, it, it's just s jello and then k-a-t yeah so so yeah definitely go and check out uh jello cat over on all of those platforms that we have no doubt no doubt put in the description <laughs> and help them out because like it's 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 it's, it's first first big steps into becoming a content creator yeah so yeah i definitely didn't step all over my shoes on that class a <laughs> little bit there so. you know <laughs> this this right now is helping me complete my first goal of 2024 which is create any sense of like a step in the right direction towards getting an online presence oh yeah brother well i'm glad to help out you know i mean uh Obviously, I want, you know, most people, more pe more people to be comfortable with being creative. And it, it seems like you're a really smart guy. Like, you you know, you have a lot of, like, thoughts on things. And yeah. I'm really interested to see what we do on uh, on here about uh, with, the, with the monsters yeah. and the other things, the, the weird old things that we make here. I'm so it's going to be a lot of fun. I am hoping that we can make some kind of end game boss monster. That's... Uh... Oh yeah, that's what I'm really hoping to do right now. For sure. Um, speaking of games, uh, we were talking a little bit before we re started recording, and uh, you know, we we not to not to date the episode or anything, but also kind of literally to date the episode. We're recording on March 10th, which uh, if you are familiar with things <laughs> that came about in like 2010 or something like that, uh, that means it's Mario Day. So uh, we're gonna do some stuff that's yeah, inspired, you know, just by a, a Super Mario. Just a little retro IP that I think a few people have heard of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, only real nerds know Mario, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. But I hope that you all, uh, listeners, uh, in in the future, had a super March 10th, a super Mario day, uh, as it were. <laughs> and, uh, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. And we will definitely be working that in a little bit later. Mothman is the coolest. Okay, so... Uh we talked a little bit about what our plans are for this episode, but tell me first, what are your top three favorite types of monsters? Okay, so I definitely like things that are in the Uncanny Valley. Um, I like androids and such. Um, yes. I There was a particular thing that uh, we discussed a little that started in the video um, Halloween special that uh, was like kind of a bone mass... Uh, I like that kind of thing where it's something that you could totally believe in, like an urban legend. Yeah, like something that you would, um, if you were out in the wild and you saw it, like th that. The yeah. kind of thing that, if they were real, I would see while I'm out driving in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the kind of thing that really makes you wonder if they're actually out there. Yeah. Things that you're when you're in the middle of a long and lonely, desolate road, 
with just trees mm-hmm. as far as the eye can see, you're worried that something like this will step out in front of your car. <laughs> And then I don't have a solid third answer for you, but basically anything that I can create or or justify the existence of. Hell yeah. No, I mean, uh, there's no problem if you only had like the two answers and then, you know, something like realistically possible, you know, is it's a good one as well because, uh, you know, yeah. if you're walking around and suddenly, hey, look at that, there's a lion or something, you know, I know it's not the same thing, but like that would be a little bit freaky if it's just something out of place. Um, right. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're walking through the woods and what the heck is that over there? Yeah. That's not. That's not a coyote. Yeah. Why is it always in the woods? Why are they always going to be out there? <laughs> Where you're at your most lonesome when you're trying to take a poop. It's an <laughs> easy trope. It's an easy trope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love to get a little more uh, creative with it, though, too, when it's something that you have to justify being there, like a setting that isn't out in the woods. Yeah. I like... Uh, I think there was one episode that you guys did where it was like an inner city thing, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I think um, that was the one with Skyler, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, that one was that was really cool. Yeah, that was fun. It was it was kind of fun to kind of like flip things on its head. Um, yeah, yeah. Speaking of cities, hey, I got a question for you. This is a prompt sure. that I just got from a Monstermatic five thousand, uh, which I've started oh, okay. pretty printing the prompts because you know I I don't want to. Have everybody deal with the, you know, horrible sound and stuff like that. But uh, okay. this monster is something that an Italian plumber might find in the sewers of a big city. Oh boy! Yeah. Um. Okay. So, so what immediately comes to mind is like the uh, the water monster creature from that one really old movie that the name is ex- escaping me. Um. You talking about Chuds? No, it's a really popular old sci-fi movie where the they're deep underwater and uh, there's this, like, it, it was, like, one of the first true CGI monsters. It's just, like, a water tentacle comes up through the moon pool. Oh. Uh... Um, Corridor Crew just did a video on it, recreating it. So I looked that up. The first thing that comes up was H2O, Just Add Water, but that is not a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I'm far too familiar with that. Yeah. I'd love to put some monsters in that series. Yeah, right. Uh, let's see. The it might be 35-year-old effect, when... how it changed movies. Um, Maybe The Abyss? That sounds right. That came out in 1989, just like me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that's the one the abyss okay so it's like the uh the monster in the abyss yeah but not maybe not made of water um i mean there are some things you might typically find in a sewer mm-hmm. um crocodiles alligators you know uh-huh yeah sure yeah crocodiles and alligators yeah um we could Ooh, it could be like just a mass of like reptiles Ooh. that just comes out of nowhere and like sometimes a, a little reptile a little like uh are turtles reptiles i don't that's a good question are turtles reptiles yeah no because the the movie amphibian no yeah reptile yeah, yeah they are reptiles. so like maybe maybe a turtle just falls out of the mass and then just wanders back into the water and then <laughs> And then just climbs back into the the mass. That would be pretty just cool, to... yeah. Like, it's just, like, there, and suddenly hey, there's a whole bunch more turtles. That's kind of wild, yeah. isn't it? I, I, I wonder what IP turtles might be prominently featured I in didn't... that's about pump plumbers. I don't know. You know? And, and, and turtles living I... in the sewers? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're doing a bit of a crossover know. here. <laughs> <laughs> Between Mario and the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. This um, is the eighties episode of Just a Little Guy. <laughs> we are already hey, doing I'm not episodes. even I wasn't even there for the eighties. Oh, I was just barely. <laughs> uh, so. yeah. Okay. So massive reptiles. So is this kind of like um are we thinking like a rat king kind of formation where they're all connected by like the tail, or are we thinking it's like uh something else? Um, I think they would almost have to be 
just completely independent, but um, they come together in like a an almost hive mind esque style. It, you know the the gnomes from Gravity Falls. Um, believe it or not, I've never seen that. So really, yeah, well, I'm a get little. On it. I'm a little uh, behind the times, if you will. I just uh, started watching Over the Garden Wall not that long ago. So, oh, okay. but like, I love the animation okay. style. I want to watch it, but I feel like uh, I don't oh, remember if this dude. was like the one of the ones that like got taken down or something like that by the creators. Because really, the what's gra- that Gravity Falls? Yeah, because really, the greatest monster of all time is David Zaslav. But you know, um, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not familiar with the uh, with the name. Oh, is that so. the creator? Of- no, no. So David Zaslav, uh, not to go on a tangent here in our monster podcast that's improvised, but, you know, uh, D- David <laughs> Zaslav is uh, the owner of the uh, Warner Brothers Discovery uh, Company. And oh, yeah, 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 right. So they've been doing uh, if, if, if you're not familiar, folks listening, uh, the Warner Brothers Discovery is kind of one of the m- most disastrous um conglomerations oh, for so for art right yeah for creative kind of works like in general probably of the last decade at least because they have this right. tendency to create like really cool ideas or like have all of these movies like completely done so it, the case that comes to mind immediately is is coyote versus uh, Acme, where it's supposed to be Wiley e. Coyote mm-hmm. files a lawsuit against Acme or whatever. John Cena was supposed to be in it. Um, they made the movie; it was completely done, and they just threw it out in the trash. They didn't let anybody like bid on it or anything like that. They just got rid of it. Um, uh. So that's like hundreds of hours, if not more, of work. You know, just down the tubes. Um, and they've done a right. whole bunch of other stuff like that over the last few years. So David Zaslav, uh, hideous monster. Although that being said, speaking please renew of, AEW because I really want to watch Dynamite sometimes. <laughs> speaking of um, Warner Brothers, I'm a little mad at them because they acquired Rooster Teeth and now are shutting it down. I heard about that. Like I said, the greatest monster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I understand now. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. But uh, Gravity Falls is on Disney. Yeah. So oh, if you've got okay. Disney. You can actually the second just go watch monster. it. Okay, sounds good. I yep, will. Uh, yep. I will find that somewhere. <laughs> uh, Disney almost rhymes with uh, what is that one big red company that does games that also fights over its IPs? Something about uh, Plumber that we were already talking oh, about. Oh yeah, yeah, Nintendo. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, oh yeah, wait, that was yeah. my friend who made YouTube videos. I don't remember what it was called. The uh, the angry video <laughs> game nerd. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. The, so we've got this mass of of reptiles that are completely like independent moving, but they're like a hive mind. Um, right. So what else? And like sometimes one just falls off. Yeah, and some of them will just fall off because you know, as you traverse the sewers of a big city, not to saying which one, you know. Uh, you know, chasing an oh, Italian what? plumber. You know, again, not gonna, not gonna say which one because there's a few, but like, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, Robbie, that was his name, right? Yeah, yeah, Robbie. it's a me, Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, sometimes you'll just have like little pieces of the hive mind fall off. Um, but so if it's all together like that, is it how how is it um? kind of a threat is it like a rolling ball kind of situation do we have like um a situation where it's like you have something in the center kind of like moving as a skeleton you know um what 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 do, what you, do think? you think what do you think about alligator hands alligator hands hell yeah i love some alligator yeah. claws <laughs> yeah I guess. and then like and then like snapping turtles maybe just to mix it up a little yeah like on the on the extremity kind of things like like maybe if it if the if the thing has been long uh, has been together for long enough because reptiles obviously uh, a lot of them have a very long lifespan perhaps they start to like uh-huh. fuse together you know Ooh. so like yeah. you'll have like the claws of an alligator and maybe like the snapping turtle heads at the at the mm-hmm. very like where the nails would be you know 
Um, yeah, it, it swings like this mass of reptile at you, and then suddenly, just out of the side, a crocodile mouth opens, or an alligator, and it just yeah takes a big chunk out of your uh, your face hole. Yeah, it wouldn't be very fun if you were an Italian plumber in the sewers. All right. Yeah, get a nice clean shave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if we're talking about like alligator claws on? Because I imagine this is going to have multiple like. Not just like four limbs. We're not looking at like a quadrupedal thing. This is going to have like a whole bunch of limbs. Yeah. I'm picturing like a lot anyway. You tell me to slow down. If I'm thinking, <laughs> no, no, I think you're you're probably spot on. It would have to be. I mean, reptiles are typically long, so it could be like a a snake like mega structure, but then has like reptilian legs made of reptiles. Yeah, yeah. Like... So it could be. Not to get too disgusting, but almost human centipede esque. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like it's this big snake that's been like eating these other Ooh. other reptiles oh, this whole time, yeah. and it does not sense pain. Like, so these reptiles, so it just like, like bursts out there, yeah. through its skin. Yeah, it never knows. Yeah, that makes sense. It never knows uh, how to be. It does it make sense? I think it does. Like it's it's never sated. <laughs> so like. It eats. I think the whole to... point is it doesn't make sense, but yeah. well, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> so it's it's never sated. So all of these like other reptiles are starting to like pop out of it, maybe. So yeah, because like, we all know that's the only thing in the sewer. Yeah, just, yeah. Just reptiles. Yeah. Um. So maybe it's gotten to the point where the main structure has actually died more or less and it's being uh the locomotion is caused by all of the other reptiles struggling inside of it yeah just trying to get out and just like forcing it along yeah yeah doesn't make it seem as threatening when like you're trying to find like a target but like it would be kind of fucked up to Mm -hmm. see in the sewers (laughs) yeah it's just like splashing around in the in the water channel and then all of a sudden it just grows a limb that is hungry for you. Yeah. <laughs> Feed us. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay. Well, I'm still going to picture like it's, it's, it's like snake body, all these other mm-hmm. things coming out of it. Um, yeah. Maybe like kind the of turtles got into some... force propelled by masses that are burgeoning out through its skin. Yeah. Yeah. So not exactly legs, but... But kind of legs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, more like a caterpillar or a centipede. Oh, yeah, yeah. If I, I'm Imagine this thing moving like an inchworm, you know? Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. It just kind of like raises up part of its midriff and then it's like slams it down. Yeah. And you got sewage all over you. Yeah, I think the big threat of this is that it's mindless movement that could be destructive to human life. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, like, it doesn't necessarily know that there's something there. It's just like, mm-hmm. yeah. This seems like something that could be found in it, an urban legend, I guess. Right. And, you know, the those sewers might be pretty sturdy but let's say they decided to run a gas main through just peeking out the wall a bit and uh if it managed to knock that thing loose that's pretty dangerous oh yeah no you said you you go down to the sewers to smoke a cigarette or something like that and that's fucked yeah yeah no (laughs) you get world's fastest moving object was a manhole (laughs) we'll have that whole scenario again oh yeah not again yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what else? How do how do we think that we would defeat this kind of thing then, if uh, if we were to find it in a fight? Well, I mean, obviously, just a gentle little bonk on the head. Well, I mean, besides that, that works for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, that was too easy. <laughs> um, I think you just have to set the mass free. Destroy the mega structure, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I was picturing as well. Is like you slice down the middle, and guess what? All those animals are now free to roam. Frankly, yeah. they'd probably just fight amongst themselves. Oh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, now I'm thinking of the uh, two rats that get stuck in a in a peanut butter trap. Oh, that sounds awful. Uh. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, it's just made me think of uh eh, never mind. I had a thought and then I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking just like a cool anime style where you, you get your sword out and you do the running flash attack and then you just like blast from one side to the, the very end and just like in an instant tear the entire thing apart. Yeah. And then it just explodes creatures everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. I mean, at that point, you'd, you'd probably kill the hive mind. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, I've, and I think that's the most dangerous part. Yeah. Maybe that's like the one thing that does remain from the the thing with the mostly dead body, I guess, you know, right. would be like its mind. And that's become so powerful that it's just able to control all of the pieces. And that's how it stays together instead of just completely disintegrating. Yeah. But even getting close enough to, to tear it open like that would just be so dangerous just an alligator shoots out the side right as you poke a hole in it and it's yeah it's just like ah, man. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> there goes my arm ah man that was my sword swinging arm that was my favorite one ah <laughs> <laughs> all right can't have too many favorite arms no you really can't <laughs> <laughs> okay so we got that um does it would it have any other kind of powers that we can think of besides just being a um, mindless mass of destruction? I don't know. I, I I think I think it's pretty good as it is. Is there anything that's coming to mind for you? No, I don't really think that I think that's a pretty good like uh just little thing that you'd find, like I said, in that kind of situation where you're running around in the sewers for no reason and uh you yeah. come upon something horrific. So that sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we just got to decide what name it is. Or what name. Now we got to decide what name it is. Yes. That's how we talk in yeah. English. That's, right. that's me talk English. Very good. It's okay. English is like my my third language. My first language is gibberish. Oh, yeah. And I don't actually have a second language. So. Wow. That's incredible. C'est yeah. incredible, if you will. Hey. Yeah. I, yeah. I had to learn that on Duolingo. Can't so. speak. <laughs> yeah i think if, you, uh, if you're looking for a language that's kind of just gibberish french is a good place to start so oh boy mm. yeah don't get me started i tried to learn french in middle school but i was homeschooled so i didn't oh. have teacher feedback yeah i'm on like <laughs> hold on a sec day number i am on day number 339 of duolingo and i've learned a bunch of words I've learned how to say the things, but uh, boy, howdy, I wouldn't count myself as fluent. <laughs> yeah, all those words, none of them make sense. Nope, I'm just like, if you said that to me out in public, I'd be like, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, I tried, I am trying to learn Norwegian and Japanese primarily, Oh. but I kind of got a little distracted from that, Kakoi. so I have to get back yeah. into it. Sorry, yeah. kakoi des, that's what I meant. I was going to say something about a different language, but maybe we shouldn't get too political here. Ah, uh, yeah, no, we don't have to. We don't have to get political. Yeah. I'll, I'll save that for different conversations. Yeah, no, you could, when you start your stuff, then you could do the, yeah. yeah. But also, like, yes, I'm politics, not going that's to. That's what everyone comes to new creators for. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, everybody starts somewhere, yeah. something to that well, effect. But, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. All right. All right, but we gotta determine a name for this guy. So what's this? What's this little guy yes. called? What do you think? Ooh. Um. Hmm. Like if you were living a, if you were a denizen of this city, and there was something just m causing havoc in the sewers below, what would the children call it, or the, the housewives, or the? Or the wives who are not housewives, <laughs> just the, the independent ladies. Or, or just the strong, independent the women. The strong, yes. independent women yes. who don't need no man. Yeah. Not to take a direct dig, but I want to incorporate New York. <laughs> what would the TikTokers call it? And under, <laughs> underground tunnels. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, New York sewer slug would be too simple. And not exactly the most related. I could see him calling it the sewer slug, but yeah, no, I hear you. 
I think most of them would say would, would call it. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? But, uh... <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got a key in front of me, and why don't we call it the New York Sewer Schlag? The New York Sewer Schlag. You know what? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Or we could just call it the New York Schlag, even. Or just the Schlag. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it does. Or sewer Schlag. The or, Sewer Schlag. Or, yeah. Yeah, just. Just the schlag. I mean, if it lives. I mean, obviously. In the sewers. People would. Then yeah. Yeah, people would associate the sewers with it, but maybe they don't always call it the sewer. The tr- schlag. The true cause... horror is when it breaks out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it would be, wouldn't it? It would be. You don't want to see that coming down the road. The schlag. Sounds good to me. I wouldn't want to see it coming down the road at all. I'd be like, okay, well, you know what. I think uh, that's enough of life for today. I'm going to go back home and uh, take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, going to I'm going to go hide in my office at the top floor. <laughs> hope the thing doesn't knock down the building. <laughs> and hope it can't climb cuz as we yep. all know, it's got sticky skin. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Feathered fleshy. No, I didn't or... <laughs> want to think about that. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna put uh, that. Uh, yeah, sticky skin. skin. Uh, I would almost think like molting, scaly skin. Molting, scaly like skin. in the middle of molting. It's molting, scaly, sticky skin sounds good. That sounds yeah. just a little disgusting. <laughs> Crunchy and probably not tasty, but people eat snake. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. I've never tried it personally, but I'm not above it. Neither have I. Yeah. Maybe someday. Yeah, yeah. And when I get down to the, isn't it more of a southern cuisine thing? I think it is. Uh, alligator is, which I had an opportunity to try alligator because we actually have an amazing like um, Louisiana style. Uh, I can't think of the actual proper term for it. But there's a phenomenal restaurant around here that does alligator tail as instead of chicken nuggets. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's actual alligator. That's pretty awesome. I've heard they're very good. I have not worked up the courage to try them. I feel like I've heard that it tastes like chicken, but I feel like people just say that about everything. So. I mean, chicken tastes like everything. That's why everything tastes you know, like chicken. That's, uh, wow. That, I hadn't thought about that before, but that's a good point. You know, it's it is the most mundane of bird meats, <laughs> I, not in a bad way. I mean, I like a good a good uh, chicken breast. I like to cook, so chicken is usually one of my go-to. I don't like handling raw meat, but when I can get over that, I usually will go to like a steamed chicken or something like that. Yeah, no, I I hate the feeling of raw meat as well so yeah uh let's see so uh, uh we got the schlag with the smolting scaly skin sticky skin okay yes and maybe that's another uh. way that it gets all this <laughs> stuff too is by just sticking to it um mm-hmm. yeah just like a turtle just a turtle sitting there yeah and it just gets like rolled over and suddenly it's upside down with its yep. shell stuck to this disgusting monster yeah this snake-like <laughs> thing that just looks awful <laughs> Maybe it's maybe it also like maybe it is constantly in the act of molting. So maybe it's like leaving yeah. big chunks of skin behind with all these. Yeah. So you always know where it's been, but you never know where it's gonna be. Yeah, and it like leaves it behind with all these other reptiles on it. So like they maybe die like as a result of it being like being stuck Ooh. in a trap, like kind of like that trap you were talking about before. Yeah. yeah. With the two rats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of death oh, on this boy. one already. <laughs> What have I done? No, no. <laughs> yeah, see, now you've now you've done an episode of just a little guy. Uh, <laughs> I hope yeah. you're happy with yourself. I'm looking at the recording time. We're only an hour in. Yeah, yeah. It's only been a half an hour on my video, so 37 minutes. That's that's fine. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we can stop on this one right now if you want. Sure. Okay, so that's the schlag. Silky. All right, all right. We're back, and we're going to start talking about some cool stuff with our friend, Hollow Static Observer. So, really quickly, um, you know, this is kind of a horror centric podcast, sort of a little bit, kind of. Um, 
sort of kind of kind of maybe you know monsters i mean monsters show up in all kinds of monsters media. and plumbers monsters and plumbers yes very horrific combination let me tell you um but so what i'm wondering then is what is something that drew you to horror what what got young hollow static observer young shallow uh what 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 inspired you to check out horror as a medium um i mean so a lot of it was um i will say just sneaking downstairs while my parents were watching movies and uh around that time my dad got me into uh doctor who because it was he, the new stuff i think was just starting to air like season eight yeah and he wanted to get me caught up a little bit on the olds the black and whites and stuff and i mean if you ask me the old ones were a lot more spooky um, oh okay the, the new ones can be very very spooky but i think the older ones in my opinion were more <sighs> of a horror centric show no, I could totally um, see that. Yeah, yeah, because there were like the Weeping Angels, um, and I think there was, if I remember correctly, there was an early draft of a creature similar to the Weeping Angels that were just mannequins. Yeah, in the black and white series. I actually, I don't know about the in the black um, and white series, and or maybe it wasn't quite back to the black and white um it might have but been, they had yeah. they they had i think guns in their hands almost like cybermen kind of like a i know the one that you're talking about kind of like a pre cybermen pre it might have been post weeping angel no i think that the ones that uh, you're thinking of and i might be wrong about this but i think that the ones that you're thinking of are like the plastic men from the first episode yes. back with Christopher Eccleston, because they had the uh, like the mannequins chasing Rose throughout the department store. Oh right, right. You know, and transforming. Yeah, that would been. Yeah, yeah that would have been the first uh, when they aired the new stuff. Then when I when he had me a little more caught up. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, the just the the spooky vibes that you'd get from like the the darker episodes of Doctor Who. Yeah. No, Doctor Who has been like the one... hugely influential so I could see. Go ahead. Right. No, no, you're good. Okay. Um and I mean that that really is kind of I I've never been super into like horror, but I've always kind of leaned that way. Like into the 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 what ifs and the the potential darker sides of the shows where like uh you know that maybe it's supposed to be a lighthearted show but there's always that that little episode here and there that might be a little bit more horror centric a little more spooky maybe a halloween special for example oh man the halloween special was always my favorite like episode mm -hmm. of just about any show you put on the halloween special and i'm like mm. yeah this is this is my jam i i didn't get to do holidays as a kid but as i got older halloween is the only holiday i've really latched on to yeah it's uh it's arguably I, the best it is, and I think it's because of like those little. It gets so much attention with the little episodes here and there, where the shows are doing specials. And... Yeah, it's like those last like three holidays of the calendar year, you know, where it's just like you know those mm -hmm. are the big ones, you know. And then when they run together, you get the spooky Christmas stuff. Yeah, then you get like the Nightmare Before Christmas, or I feel like the Weeping Angels had a, a Christmas episode, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, it may have been one that just like uh, de debuted. I know the there's first. been plenty of Christmas episodes, but I'm not sure if or which one of them would have featured Weeping Angels. More than likely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I might have just been making that up in my head. 
<laughs> I haven't seen Doctor Who in too long because it's locked behind Amazon right now, and I'm not going to pay for that. Apparently, in 2012, there was a poll of over 10,000 respondents conducted by the Radio Times, and the Weeping Angels were voted the best Doctor Who monster with 49.9, uh, oh 49.4% were... of the vote. You know, they're not my favorite. Um, Cybermen are probably my favorite. Yeah. But they are a close third after Daleks. That's fair. Daleks are pretty freaky. Or if not Eggs freaky, time then... and <laughs> if not freaky, then I mean, I, I appreciate that they're like an obvious, uh, what do you call it there? I like how analog smart they for... are. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they're like an analog for fascism that works really yeah. well. So you are superior in one sense. Yeah. You are better at dying. <laughs> Yeah, the Daleks are pretty fucked up. <laughs> Kill a man, take his arms. So, I am going to ask you a question. Do you have, in your possession right now, do you have a D8? D8? Yep, D8. That's the diamond-shaped one for anybody listening who, uh, yeah. We aiming high, aiming low? Oh, just anything. I just have, uh... I just need a number between one and eight, and I figured this was a well, good. We got a seven. On par That's fucking crazy, dude. Because when I rolled mine, I got a seven the first time, and then I got a seven the second time. So we got three sevens in a row, which means hey, we gotta go. We gotta go seven. to Las Vegas or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You and me. We're gonna go beat. The yeah, casino we're gonna go. Odds. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll okay. start our own casino. We got blackjack and hookers. <laughs> well, blackjack and hookers. <laughs> and you know what? Forget about the forget about the casino. Okay. Um, yeah. So the reason I asked you to do that is because it was selecting the name of the next monster, which okay. um, it's not maybe not maybe not maybe not the best name I've ever come up with. But you know, I uh, I felt like I kind of you know. I need to need to do it. So, uh, okay. the name that I've come up with for this next monster is Decomposing Hands. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Huh. Well. So, <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> huh. Well, I mean, what if we threw a curveball, and there are no hands? Oh, that would be fucked up. <laughs> So maybe it's like something where maybe it's more of a, well, I don't know. I was going to say maybe it's more of a concept. And then I was like, that's kind of a cop out, isn't it? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really a monster on this monster podcast. Well, we can't just do another thing that is just a mass of decomposing things in the shape of a hand. That is true. That would be too easy. Hmm. Not on this, the 80s hands. episode of oh, Just a Little Guy. <laughs> I got it. Oh, okay. Okay, so what about a creature that, like, spews necrotic acid of some kind that only affects your hands? Oh, okay. Interesting. Necrotic. Like, it, it doesn't do acid damage. It just does, like, necrotic damage, but all it affects is your hands. Hmm, interesting. So it maybe it like so I'm thinking maybe it's only high enough that like the only place it would hit is your hands, or maybe it's in a place where your hands go regularly and that's where it attacks you. I, I like the hands go regularly idea. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking about like if you're washing your hands. Ooh. And then it like some more I don't plumbing know, maybe it spits up from the sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, we are getting back into plumbing. No, we want to switch it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> what if instead of spits up from the sink, it, like, comes out of the faucet just out of the blue? Oh, yeah. Like just it's completely some kind out of, of nowhere. Like, like, because I've done a bunch of, like, virus or, like, bacteria kind of themed monsters. So, mm -hmm. like, maybe it's something like that, though, where it's, like, constantly traveling through the mm -hmm. water system and it will like come out like 
it's it's like on its journey and for some reason it just comes through like that particular set falls of, like, into a treatment and, plant or something yeah yeah like it's or gets sucked yeah, in. yeah gets distributed kind of yeah, like now, uh, now it's in the water tower uh-oh uh-oh <laughs> Be careful what you well then it wouldn't just go after your hands it would just go after like if you drank that water like well i mean i don't know about you but when i'm turning on the shower water the, the my hands is the first thing it typically hits that is true that is the same for me because i'm just like okay let's see how hot it is oh god uh-huh <laughs> perfect <Yeah>. oh <laughs> yay i don't have hands anymore what the hell <laughs> Well, now I could call out of work. <laughs> yeah, uh, how are you going to call? You got no hands. Oh no, I have to use my nose. I've, I've actually gotten that. pretty all right with using my phone. Oh, my nose, me yeah. too. I uh, uh, refuse to try my tongue. I've seen it be done. I don't think that's a good idea. No, I don't lick your phone that. screens, kids. Don't, don't lick your phones. So we got a monster. What's going up through people's pipes and, uh -huh. and burning it, and their it, hands? Yeah, but not in a fiery, hot way. Burning like uh, withering, like chemical. Chem yeah, yeah. Like so, let's consider how this monster might might have come about. Um, like, what is its origin story? Why does it go after hands? Well, we've already established that that kind of just happens to be the thing that it most commonly comes in contact with. Right. So, Otherwise, it's kind of harmless, but it could. Uh, I wouldn't say harmless. Mm -hmm. You get it on a more critical part of your body. Yeah, that could be pretty bad, too. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So why does it travel through pipes why is it why does it uh exist in the water so Maybe? i've kind of come up with an idea like and, and stop me if you've heard this one before oh. what if there was maybe, maybe it's like a curse kind of thing you Ooh. know okay or I'm it listening. could be a thing where um you know, are you familiar with the Child's Play franchise? I'm I'm not totally sure. Or at least have a passing knowledge of. So, so Chucky is the is 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 a um Yeah, I, I know Chucky. An avatar, yeah, right. for a serial killer called Charles Lee Ray. Yep. Um and he basically wished himself into the doll to make sure that he didn't die. Yeah. So what if this is like cursed water from a serial killer Ooh. who's looking for the right hands oh. to like go and carry on his deeds? Oh. So like you can so it can it turns someone into a killer by yeah. way of this curse. And the way to identify them is looking at their hands if they have yeah very because their hands are mummified almost yeah decomposing yeah just and uh, it's it's looking for somebody the way I imagine it anyway is somebody who could be manipulated into Ooh. becoming a killer somebody easily swayed or somebody um somebody who might have dark thoughts already. You know, sure. And just need that extra little push. Somebody who might just be taking a a shower to cool their head because they're so mad at their boss mm -hmm. um, for making them go jump on uh, turtles. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> In the sewers <laughs> of a big city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um. But then, like, yeah, you're washing yourself, and like, it's kind of like evil shower thoughts, almost, you know. <laughs> oh no, the yeah. Reddit, the Reddit, and all of us. Uh, uh, don't let your so redditor out. Don't let never release your inner redditor. <laughs> that's just good advice. Never uh, release your inner redditor. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, how okay. do you feel about that? What would you change about that or or add on to that? Um, well, let's see. I mean, it's pretty good where it stands. Let's see. So we got comes out of the faucets, uh, targets people who are already maybe angry or vulnerable. Um, mm. It is a curse that travels through water. So, ooh, I got it. So mm-hmm. where does the curse come from? Maybe it's the last person who had the curse and when they are defeated, the, I mean, maybe they look for the nearest water supply to, um, to almost infect, to move the curse along. Mm, interesting. Um, so the, what if, um, I like that idea. What if it's something like, maybe this killer like so i'm thinking what if the killer died by way of like being dumped into a vat of acid or something like that kind of like the joker in the okay. 1989 batman <laughs> okay. movie or like um, terminator but acid yeah yeah and then like maybe it drains into the water that's how it impacted ooh, the water ooh, supply ooh, in the first i got place. it uh-huh. summer camp he uh-huh. or he or she drowned in the uh the the um what's it called kind of like the, crystal lake style yeah but like instead yeah. of the lake it was the um the sewage repository oh, okay <laughs> all right so it, it maybe not quite acidic but um I don't know if you could incorporate acid into that. No, I mean, I think that just over time, like the decomposition and stuff, yeah. like decomposing, decomposing hands. hands. Yeah. I mean, really, you would just need the one skin cell, I guess, in the, uh, you know, <laughs> sure, yeah, in the water to really uh, make it work. And then, like, uh, when the waste treatment management company comes to collect, they mm-hmm. don't know that... Uh, so they they scoop up the sewage and they take it back to the treatment plant and then it gets into the city water. Oh yeah. no. Oh no, not again. Oh no. <laughs> it's happening uh, again. <laughs> yeah, endless number of of uh, you know, uh what do you call it there? Reboots or 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 sequels rather. Yeah. Um and also, it could become like a whole infection thing. So the way I'm picturing it is it only affects one person at a time. But okay. really, when you think about it, it could affect like an entire city. Right. Ooh, it could be like, it, it could almost be like a zombie outbreak. Yeah. When it gets into the water supply and then they kind of just shamble off looking for different cities to affect. And most of the yeah. time they just trip in a lake as or, or a creek as they're looking for more cities and then yeah i mean if you're living in the united states and you're trying to infect the world you got to go through the ocean uh, yeah yeah coastal city gets infected and then you know just kind of and infected wanders into the ocean maybe they fall out of a sewer line yeah (laughs) i'm not thinking i'm so how 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 set are you on the zombie thing so, like, uh, the not shambling per- kind of thing. Not necessarily. Uh, it, it was just an example, like uh, oh yeah, how the plague like a, would yeah. spread, or in this case, curse. Like yeah. not not zombies biting people, but like the the cursed looking for people to hunt down, and then yeah. Oh, you know what? We talked earlier about Doctor Who. Right. Do you remember the waters from Mars? Uh, Mar- waters Ooh, of Mars yes! episode when yes! they would like get somebody t- like down and they like vomit water on them uh-huh. to like make them infected. It comes it from the like carrots. That? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all because you were trying to do- make your eyesight better. Uh- uh-huh. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, I think if I remember correctly, the actual source was the iceberg that they were melting to. Uh create drinkable water right yeah i think that that's right 
So that sounds right to me. So we have the original serial killer died in a summer camp in a vat of um well potentially sewage or something. Sewage, yeah. And maybe then, it was like he was causing trouble there, like got knocked into the sewer and died there with his hand like in the water with the bloody knife still in it or yeah, something like that. Yeah. And like And then the skin cells from that hand are so cursed mm-hmm. by anger and evil that it just started infecting the water supply. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, you have an entire summer camp that is no longer a summer camp. Yeah, now it's just a bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a lake here. Yeah, it's red. Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, <laughs> uh, iron deposits. Yeah. Let's say. <laughs> uh, source of iron. Yeah, yeah. certainly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I think that 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 makes sense with that. They, what, they, what else needs to be added to it? Do you think? Uh, is there a way? Do you think to defeat it totally, or just you got to go one by one? Um, I'm thinking one by one exorcist style. Yeah. Maybe if you get an, a large enough group of them together, you could get them like in a in a city square and do a max a mass exorcism. Yeah. But like Just I like don't think you could ever screen. Yeah, I don't think you could ever truly purge the water. Yeah. Once it gets out there, it's it's going. So I think you'd got to be on the watch. Yeah, I think you'd have to take it on a case by case, maybe like a um Van Helsing organization kind of Yeah, like hunting hunters. vampires, but in this case just cold-blooded murderers that have been oh can i say that is that demonetized no, that's the fine. word okay i don't care no. all the money i make from this is on patreon <laughs> patreon.com slash just a little guy hey <laughs> okay um all right any other prompts that we uh, need to cover here I don't think so. I think this is a pretty solid one. I I do think that while it is threatening to have like a mass like issue where like the the killer spirit, let's say, mm-hmm. uh like goes to a whole bunch of people at once, I do think that if you're making a movie out of it, it's a lot cooler if it's just one person. Like it's a lot yeah. easier to just have yeah. like one person. And then you're like kind of making the thing over and over well, again. Well, the you know, the movie like, could be like it? in a the the movie could be in like a post apocalyptic sort of they're rebuilding but they're yeah you never know who it is because they already took care of the problem or so they thought yeah (laughs) they thought they thought wrong so then they they have to hunt it down yeah and each time they find the source it pops up again right just somehow you know because evil never dies (laughs) Apparently. West Virginia represent. All right. Welcome back. And uh, we are still here with our friend Shello. Uh, we are hanging out, making some monsters, doing some cool things. Yeah. And I was just curious about, you know, one of the basic uh, fundamentals of this show is is character design. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of important when you're coming up with monsters and just, you know, just when you're making fiction in general to have a solid basis for like, you know, what you do, uh, right. you know, the, uh, what do you call it there? A method, if you will. Mm-hmm. A method so, to the so madness. what is your, exactly, exactly. So, so how do you find that you approach character design when you're starting a new creative project? So, I mean, a lot of it is similar to what we're doing here. You just find prompts and you go, okay, well, what can I do with this? Um, for me though, I take it a step further and I take those prompts, come up with what I can, uh, whatever I can muster. And then I go back over it with whatever I came up with my, my creature that I've decided on. And I, I kind of do a bit of a deeper dive into how it might function if it were to exist in real life, um, 
I have a one of my prized creations. I believe I've yeah, actually I shared you the Google Docs file. Um That's right. It was a creature that is a plant, but it's humanoid in some cases and not humanoid in other cases because it can basically take any form it's an um, an amalgamation of um various plant types and like fungus but it Mm -hmm. in total in a collective mass it is almost indistinguishable from a real animal in how it works. Like it has a proper digestive tract that is based on fungus. It's a two part, like two stomach system where one fungus breaks it down part way. And then another separate type of fungus breaks it down the rest of the way. And then for example, it has chloroplasts and mitochondria. So it can take power from the sun, but also whatever, maybe, um, carrion for example that it stumbles across while it's shambling through the forest um whatever it picks up it can it can swallow and digest some uh it's not the kind of thing that would go on a rampage it doesn't have enough energy for that it's not the kind of thing that would hunt someone down um it's it's kind of just like a scavenger that's usually sitting basking in the sunlight somewhere and uh it yeah getting that photosynthesis on yeah you know. and then meanwhile whatever it's collected on the way to the nearest sunny spot um di- dissolving it essentially um in its stomachs but yeah. it has like wood bones like its bone structure is essentially a skeleton that is made of wood um like like a tree like a young tree nice nice soft but sturdy wood and then around that mm-hmm. it has like a a skin like material um and it has if i can remember how to pronounce these it has flowers on its head. I'm thinking there. I have two different types of flowers that I want to be on it. Um, kind of like comically large. I'm thinking one would be for the more male version, and one would be for the uh, the more feminine version. So I gotcha. There's uh, Dolly Tartan and Dianthus superbus are the uh two cre or the two flower types that I'm wanting to incorporate with it. Um Oh, the Dahlia Tartan looks incredible. It is. Um it's like this um it's like this common almost kind of like an explosion the, of like right. reds and whites and pinks. They're beautiful and from but like the not center. the typical kind of lily or rose that you might see someone incorporate. Yeah. No, I I hadn't seen that before, so that's really cool. Yeah. I could see how that would be like the basis for something to uh for that kind of creature that you were you were discussing. I'm yeah, sorry. it it it's um brain left. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh I'm thinking it would be like mainly to attract pollinators and that's kind of how it uh reproduces, how it extends itself. It's just uh, it it just it's a plant. Yeah, I mean, it's a plant that a acts plant. like an animal. That would be really freaky. And sometimes a human, because the, they can sometimes mm-hmm. take the shape of humans. Yeah, because the most terrifying part of, you know, monsters is is people. Right. The most terrifying monster, I guess, is why I should say is people. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I I have a whole plan for, um one of the first encounters of this creature in my story is going to be a humanoid, a humanoid form that they just see coming over the crest of the hill. They just see this 
what they think is a person so they approach it but it's actually just this plant and they're like oh okay well i guess it's not actually you know alive in the sense that we and then it turns to look at them oh yeah they're like oh okay yeah. well, you know does it have eyes like i don't know yet um <laughs> do i want to wait long enough to find out uh, probably not yeah <laughs> okay yeah um yeah but like i i have another type of creature that's a it's a boar that i'm working on it uh was the it's kind of like a prized cattle crop or cattle crop a prized cattle creature um very dangerous killed the one of the main characters mothers um because the she grew up on a farm and they were raising these droghead boars and uh Liciel was playing next to the boar pen she's throwing rocks and one of them hits next to the the brood mother and splashes some mud on her uh pigling or hogling oh. and the brood mother goes on a rampage and is about to attack the little girl and her mother comes out to rescue her and does not make it um it's okay that's not spoilers it's going to be in the very beginning of it's the first page i haven't decided if it's going to be the first page or the third yet (laughs) ah well you know yeah it's in the first 10 it's in the first chapter it's the opening line this person (laughs) died here's how um (laughs) my storyline my story writing is not trauma focused but what i want to do with it is kind of uh methods of addressing and coping with trauma no i mean that that makes a lot of sense i mean i feel like that's a lot of how horror kind of is handled right and that uh, um i was gonna circle yeah. that back around is like sometimes the spookiest monsters are created by you know trauma that you grew up with or maybe just happened to you and then it creates this thing in your head and you just am i getting too dark (laughs) no not at all are you kidding me um we uh no we uh that's that's certainly a basis for for horror i think that we kind of talked about like a bit with Dan Drambles when he was on a few episodes ago. Um, right. You know, that that's that's kind of a big part of the genre, so mm-hmm. not at all. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these things, a lot of creatures are coping mechanisms for a lot of people. It's, you know, yeah. if this isn't... If I can bring myself to not be scared of this, you know, nothing can hurt me. Right. It's about overcoming fear, mm-hmm. kind of, sort of, by addressing those traumas. Right. So, An indirect, direct yeah. path. Exactly, exactly. It's like, um, I almost said it's like when you, if you punch something, but you put on a velvet glove, you know. Right. You're not technically hitting it with your hand, but you are, at the same time, right. attacking the problem. I don't know. No. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good point. It's kind of like a boxing glove. Yeah, yeah. Baby's first boxing. Yeah, the monster is the boxing glove. You are oh, wearing God. that monster on your hands. Oh, no. <laughs> we're, we're getting back to hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To escape the trauma of the monster itself, which is on your hand it, right now. The monster on your hand is trying to turn you into a sadistic mass murderer because <laughs> By punching. because the because the person who wore it last died in a summer camp sewage plant or sewage yeah <laughs> that sounds familiar <laughs> oh. <laughs> did we do that already oh maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah. spoilers you know it's all editing for all you know we talk about this before we did that monster yeah so. <laughs> uh, we've we've had this we've been recording over like the course of three years uh, Ron doesn't mm-hmm. know, but I've I've secretly been recording with him for for three years. 
it's honestly incredible since our dms only go back like maybe a month yeah, <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. well you just use a whole bunch of clips of me from what's left in the context. <laughs> yes. Oh, that would be that would be something. How many hands oh, how many hands uterus. can you chop off? <laughs> oh man. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why don't you feed it to the fungus? Yeah. You know? uh, well, you know, that that is always the answer. Feed it to the fungus. Yeah. Oh. Which brings me along to the next monster, which is brought to us oh, by friend of the show guest of the the most previous episode okay five months ago that i recorded (laughs) uh tucker woolly okay uh, sent in this this name it is the the bothersome bug scamp bug scamp bug scamp huh the bothersome bug scamp so when you hear a group of people sitting out uh, around a campfire and they're talking about the bothersome bug scamp. Mm-hmm. And you should already know what you know it looks like and stuff like that. What picture are you painting in your brain? Ooh. Um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is a bugbear. Um, but mm. the second thing that comes to mind is just like a, like a roly-poly. Like a big, mm. very big roly-poly. Like the... Um... Like potato bugs? Uh, is that what you call them? The ones that I curl up? They're not quite know. centipedes, but like they just curl up in balls? I think they are the same thing, but I might be wrong. It's the bugs, though, that roll into a ball when yeah. they're disturbed, right? Yeah. Kind of. We'll check really the, quick because it, the armadillo, like armadillo? armadillo of insects. Oh, that is a much different bug than I was thinking of when I looked up potato bugs. Um, what is a potato bug then? So a, a potato bug, the one that I had pictured, I think is the one that you're talking about where they roll up into a ball. But like when I just Googled potato bug, the first thing that came up was the Jerusalem cricket, oh, which is that is different. not. Yeah, that is um, not. A... No. There's also like hmm. the uh, Colorado potato beetle. I like the way that looks. Though. I guess maybe it's just a maybe it's just a me thing, man. Ooh, uh, you know I don't what? know. I, I really do like the way this Jer- Jerusalem cricket looks. So maybe we could do like a. a mix between that and a roly-poly yeah i mean i could see that i mean the the already the thorax kind of looks like mm-hmm. one of those so yeah i could totally see that uh being a thing okay so yeah okay so it, it's kind of like a big giant cricket with the ability to roll into a ball yeah kind of thing how, how big do you think it would be yeah. like uh i'm thinking maybe Definitely not horse size. Maybe like a large dog size. I could see that being threatening. Yeah, this thing is already the size of about two quarters. Yeah. Um, back to back. So yeah, that's already like uh, uh, the third uh, picture what's the word I'm here, for here for just the front page of Google. Uh, also, I wrote patatty bug. That's not patatty. That's bug. Not right. It. <laughs> That's what this it auto corrected for me, but uh, yeah, the third picture here that I'm looking at is just disgusting. But I could totally see how that would like roll up into a ball. Yeah, the one that I see here is like, it's one like it's in some rocks. There's one where it's in like some sand, and then there's one where it's like burrowed into the ground. And I'm like, that's disturbing. Yeah, I'm gonna send you the one that I'm looking at specifically. Okay, let's see how I can describe this with words for our listeners. Um, absolutely disgusting okay so this is <laughs> i don't know it's kind of cute it's actually cute in a very <laughs> disgusting way it looks it almost so, looks like it has a little nose but like that is just a yeah. ball of pus oh yeah no that would be disturbing so listeners if you're if you're wondering it's like the um the cricket or sorry is it a cricket is that what i don't it know it yeah. says uh, jerusalem the... cricket Jerusalem cricket. So what it is is it's kind of like reared back. If you could picture like the face of like a cricket, but it's got like a big old bulbous nose on like the end a, of it. Like a like a certain it's... plumber you might know. Yeah, yeah, like somebody whose name is celebrated on March 10th every year. Right. Um but then it's got like these uh forearms kind of to the side of its head and it's like got them up in kind of like a I don't know. It might be like trying to attack or it might just be like, ah, startled kind of thing. 
Uh, and then it's got like these other smaller, I imagine they're also kind of arms, but they might be feelers like in front of the nose that I, I, I'm not totally sure what they do. Yeah. They're just kind of like scrunched up into its face kind of thing. I don't know. It looks kind of cute to me. I it could looks go like it's kind of like squinting its this. eyes, but yeah, the... um, I'll probably post it as the cover art. <laughs> there you go. Or not. <laughs> um, I, the family is Stenopel Matide. Matide? Okay. I don't know what that means at all. Um, it, it's, it is an insect. It's, n- I don't think it's, uh. Oh, they're also called skunk bugs, skull insects, earth babies, or shiny bugs. Yeah. It's a family of mostly, very large, mostly flightless orthropods. Or, or not orthropods. Orthropod. <sighs> Orthopotatoes, yes. Orthopotarans. <laughs> that was way too hard for my brain. No, it's okay. I wouldn't be able to pronounce it, so. Yeah, maybe cut the a little, <laughs> cut the first attempt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, leave it okay. in. I don't care. Or, yeah, I don't know. Stenopelmetus fuscus <laughs> is what they are called. Oh, God. Is, that is a disgusting they, name. They are... Large insects that look like a cross between a large ant and a fat wasp, which I think is very true. That is a I could totally yeah. That. that is a great way to describe that. Yeah, because its backside is definitely like a giant wasp, like stinger kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, and I don't think it is um, legitimately a cricket. I don't. It doesn't. As far as I can tell, it no. doesn't look like it actually jumps. Yeah. Apparently, they their bite is very painful, but it's not poisonous. Okay. So. Okay. But yeah. So that's what we can picture is a big old cricket ish kind of thing. A big old ant mixed with a wasp that rolls up into a ball mm-hmm. when startled. Yeah. It'd be like a it just okay. an armadillo. It's just an insect armadillo slash wasp. An insect slash... armadillo. Yeah. And then it just it can bite, but it doesn't like it won't kill you if it bites you. It yeah, probably it hurt more a than a than a typical dog bite, but yeah, I mean, with it when it's that size, I imagine it could do some serious damage. Yeah, like you know, but yeah, probably not poisonous. Um, okay, okay, so I think the the most dangerous would be when they're in swarms and you disturb the swarm. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm thinking because their name is Bug Scamp, like it, it makes me think of Scamper. So maybe Ooh, they yeah. like are very fast mm-hmm. or scampering through the cornfields. They like to hide. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they like, maybe that's it. Maybe they eat corn and like they take down an entire stalk at a time. But like you'd only notice if you're standing at like a higher vantage point because they're like mm-hmm. just so they're fast. They're responsible for crop circles. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> you heard it here fo- <laughs> first, folks. It's not aliens, it's just these big. That's- disgusting grotesque <laughs> uh plumber face bug looking scamp. bug scam <laughs> yeah <laughs> what if it had a human face though Ooh. what if oh no <laughs> it's it already almost does kind of oh god it already almost does kind of mm. look uh with that big um with the big nose yeah the big the bulbous the nose and the, the eyes they look not angry but like how would you describe that expression it's not quite angry but definitely not happy to see you it's like it's trying to intimidate you yeah trying like but maybe it rolled a low charisma check yeah so instead it's just like or it has a low charisma stat (laughs) so yeah 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 Okay. It's like I'm going to get you, and you're like, "Oh, what a cute little guy!" <laughs> it's just a little guy. It's just a little guy on Patreon.com/slash just a little guy. Nice. Okay. Oh God, the plugs are getting worse. I'm sorry, everybody <laughs> listening. I'm a little bit rusty after five months away. It's just yeah. you know. <laughs> I had to kick your button gear so that you get on it. Yeah. Get back. Yeah. To well, it. I mean, it's. <laughs> the thing about it is usually you get better over time but yeah. this episode I've, they've gotten worse uh, so uh, well okay so 
Is there anything else we need to add on to this guy, though? Because aside from being a giant Jerusalem cricket, well, like, I imagine there's got to be something else to it. You said he's fast, right? So I'm fast, thinking... yeah, likes to hide. I'm thinking the way he gets around is probably Droidica-esque, where he, like, rolls up in that in that uh, uh, roly-poly tail thing. Um, mm. And then, like... I don't know how he would navigate, but he just, like, it, it allows him to get right between the corn stalks just perfectly. So he eats corn like stalks, idea, he rolls around, um, he has mm-hmm. low charisma, but, like, in a cute but also disgusting way. Uh, cute but disgusting. Disgustingly cute. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what else did we say? Hey, I mean, um, they very he's dangerous fast and as well. I don't yeah, fast. Um, maybe they like don't travel in Not swarms poisonous. typically. Yeah, so maybe it's just like um, maybe they just have like a pod of one or two. Yeah, and then like go around, and those are the scavengers. So like they'll they'll take down a corn stalk and then the maybe they eat the stalk itself but then they bring the the ears back the ears of corn back to the the cobs back to the nest mm, yeah okay so they bring the the cobs of corn back to the nest um but like do you think they would build with those or um like you're walking through the forest all of a sudden you see like all these corn cobs built in like a i think they would have an eat, igloo shape i think they would typically like the Maybe the corn they're bringing back to rate or to feed to their larva, but maybe what they build with is the proteins that they gain from consuming the stock itself. Oh. Yeah. So maybe not quite like a silk, but maybe like they can reinforce sticks and or, or oh oh they could like take sticks and glue them together with this like protein goop and like build nests out of that i like that idea because it's it's disgusting enough yeah that it makes sense um on this show but it's also kind of cute um, but because also, they're just yeah practical. lincoln logs yeah they're just doing lincoln yeah. logs with a little bit of glue that they secrete from their from, from, from who skin. knows where we're not gonna <laughs> yeah yeah from who knows where it's mysterious you know nobody's ever gotten close enough to actually yeah because they they scamper observe. away yeah and then they roll They're up very and just scaredy oh no yeah so they're more of a nuisance than they are like a threat. Yeah. To people, then, would you say? Oh gosh, no, what? I'm sorry. What was the bug scamp? What was the first part? Those bothersome bug bothersome. scamps yeah. with their those bothersome yeah. bug scamps are stealing my corn. Yeah, I could see that being an entire D and D campaign. It, Mostly because I... we're running a D and D campaign right now with giant spiders stealing things from a couple of towns. You know, I'm actually <laughs> going to add that to my note because that's one of the things I'm working on is a D and D campaign. Um, nice. I'm definitely putting the, these in here. Uh, oh yeah, bother some bug scam. Oh, I hope it comes out before like this episode does. Uh, because, it won't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm. Oh I haven't God, even no. finished <laughs> setting up for the episode zero. I started this uh, last year before Christmas, and then the holidays hit, and I just haven't had any time to finish setting up. So. I gotcha. Yeah, but I'm getting back onto it. That's another thing I've been working on. Is uh, I. Nice. I just uh, made a final boss sort of creature that is somewhat a cross between a an elder brain and a regigigas because one of my characters convinced me to let him play essentially three regimon but i told him he had to do it in D style so they're actually warforged he's got like a warforged oh, right. hive mind they're trying to get back to the nest but uh i think what i'm gonna actually wind up doing is have their regigigas be almost like an elder brain interesting yeah remind me what a regigigas is again uh it's this like do you know what a regimon is 
Uh, no. Okay. Well. Oh, never mind. I looked it up. It's a mo- it's a Pokemon. Oh yeah, yeah. I should have mentioned that. Another uh, another IP by this, uh, no, this the sewage company. plumber guy That's company. A, yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So Regigigas is essentially the. I I don't actually know much about Pokemon, but he's like mm. the god of the Regimon. He's the biggest, okay. baddest Regimon. I, got you. I could see that. It's uh, it's about twelve foot two and mm-hmm. nine hundred twenty-five pounds. It yeah. fits right about in perfectly with the Elder Brain's core stats. Yeah, I could see that working out really well. Ooh. Very cool. So they're more of a nuisance than a threat. Okay. Um, they glue sticks together with the protein goop. Uh, there's scavengers, mostly for cornfields. I imagine that means that they then just like live around cornfields kind of thing. Yeah. Or like maybe just a field of grain in general, you know, I don't know. Yeah. They they would probably be like somewhat adjacent to farmland. Yeah. So they're more of a farm like kind of pet. They, 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 uh, I don't want to say terrorize. They are a nuisance to like, yeah. uh, rural communities yeah you can't you can't get close enough to their nest to find out if they're actually keeping bodies in there <laughs> yeah of a so it's the size of a medium-sized dog you said uh yeah i think that probably or do you want to say like maybe a medium too uh, large depending on its uh maturity yeah i was gonna say because like um oh and then the queen oh, the queen is like always yeah. larger than the rest of the servant insects right so the queen would yeah. have to be like the size of a bus, I think. But like, oh god! <laughs> but like burrowed yeah. under this mass of sticks that they're building. I like that idea because that would be really threatening if you happened on it. Yeah, and I imagine her boi- her bite would be like more poisonous. <laughs> Probably take your head off. Yeah, I imagine so. Ooh. Stronger bite. This is definitely going yeah. in my campaign. <laughs> all right i like hearing that yeah. this is going in my campaign yeah all right you'll have to give me the uh if you end up making a the stat sheet. block yeah i mean i'll probably just yeah, make one I myself really but uh i was gonna say i would i'd probably just try it on your own personally yeah like holy cow i'm having trouble with that i mean i just made by the way two... if anybody would like to reach out and... oh oh did you i well yeah the the regigigas Thing, the runai oh that's right the runai gigas is what i've temporarily named it because but yeah and then i made a something else i don't remember exactly what i remember you were telling me about that though so because you asked me for like advice on how to make it and yeah I was like i don't know that's okay i figured it out <laughs> yeah well that's good i'm glad to hear it okay um was there anything else we needed to add to, to the bothersome bugs camp well i you think? think the queen was the last thing we needed to tie it up yeah, I think so. I think that makes it a pretty well-rounded little monster. Like it's a, it's kind of a, it it is bothersome, and then it gets a whole lot more than bothersome when you factor in the queen. Right, and that accomplishes my my uh, one of the goals that I was hoping for while we were coming into this was making some kind of boss monster. Yeah, and then you know if you if if you uh, use your Regigigas or. Uh, you know, character there, you could do reg- Regigigas Regicide or something like that against this thing because it's got a queen. Right. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to cut that joke. That joke <laughs> fucking sucked. <laughs> oh, brother. This guy stinks. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I think it sounds good. So that's the, that's the Bothersome Bugs game. And that's been our episode. So uh, thank you so much for being here, Shello. Um, yeah, thank you wh- for Where me. would you like people to go? Oh, it's my pleasure. Where, where would people go to, to find you well, if, they, if you choose to be found? Um, I think I already mentioned the. I got the YouTube. I got Blue Sky. I haven't posted anything yet. Um, still working on things. Still trying to figure out where I'm going to land on my feet but uh Mm -hmm. once i get that figured out i am definitely working on stuff so um absolutely eventually here i'm probably gonna start posting maybe on blue sky just the things that i come up with that i want to implement into 
various projects. So um, nice. And then my my blue sky links to my YouTube, my YouTube links to my Twitch, and the Discord server that I'm working on. Um, it might be up and running by the time people listen to this, so that might be a thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So all, all of my things, I'm trying to keep it sort of a loop that links back to each other. So if someone wants to find me on something, they can find me on one thing and then they'll make their way over. Yeah, you jump into that Ouroboros and uh, right. the way you go. And then it's it's uh, just hollow static observer. Um, hollow as in empty, static as in stationary, and then observer as in watching upon things. Ah. Um, and then the at is S J E L L O K A T. That applies right. to pretty much everything I've set up so far, except Twitch. Yeah, that one was weird. I don't know so how to deal Twitch. with that. I hate Twitch. I only set it up because how I do... wanted to reserve it. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. I was gonna say, did you want any like walkthroughs on that? Because like I can help you, but like if you... um. Uh, yeah, yeah, in afterwards, if you wanted to, a, a, any advice is welcome. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again for for joining us today, Jello. Yeah. AKA Hollow Static Observer. I feel like I can't I wait to see what you... reaching out to shake your hand. <laughs> I would. Yeah, and we could we could do the the digital handshake here. I'll do the I'll do the golf clap sound hey. on Discord. You know. Hey. Yeah. Yep. Um, it was a pleasure talking with you. Pleasure making some monsters with you. And you know what? Uh, I can't wait to see what you make. Yeah, so. this has been fantastic. Hopefully the show runs long enough. Maybe I'll be back for episode uh, 36. Who knows? I wouldn't hold your breath, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just the, the episode, not you. No, no, the I, th- I get it. I know what you meant. <laughs> um, oh, man, I just realized halfway through saying that. Oh, this could be insulting. Uh, no, no uh, I understood what you meant. <laughs> Don't worry. No, I'm I'm very much hoping that you uh, keep carrying on with this. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm I'm very proud of the show. I hope that I can continue to make it. For a long time to come. Yeah. So, um, yes, but everybody uh, go and check out uh, Jello's work. Um, and we'll be happy to have uh, you back on sometime in the future. Yeah. And uh, as always, something affiliated with the monsters that I'm going to throw in there later. Right. Because I can't think of it yeah. right now. Fix it in post. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, everybody. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks again for listening to Just a Little Guy. Special thanks go out to our patrons who continue to make this show possible, especially those who subscribe at our incomprehensible Cosmic Abomination tier. Those patrons include Taru Tikkanen, D. Solari, Lunchbox, and Jared S. As ever, if you'd like to support our show, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want to help contribute to our dental fund, uh, be sure to check out our Ko-Fi at ko-fi.com slash rswarthout. That's ko-fi.com slash rswarthout. The link will be in the description. And if you'd also like to check out Jello's work, but you don't want to do all that heavy typing, don't worry. I've compiled all the links discussed in this episode in the description. So go and check out all of their work right down there in the description. All right. Also, me and Jello are going to be streaming together on his channel on Thursday, June 27th at about noon Eastern time. So be sure to tune in then um, and hang out with us for a little bit. Tell us what you liked about the episode. Thanks again for listening. And as always, beware of the bothersome bug scamp with all of its curling up into a ball and biting you in a very painful way. All right. Thanks again for listening, guys. Goodbye. Ah, my uterus!